<clears throat> hey everybody, how you doing? <clears throat> Welcome back to uh, to the afternoon session here. It's uh, it's a Friday, August thirteenth. <clears throat> it's three o'clock in the afternoon. We're here for our last hour of trading today, to the afternoon before the uh, weekend, up. and uh, we are uh, looking to see how this market is going to close out the week. We are at uh, negative seven points on the Dow. We haven't had much of a range today. I mean, we really aren't doing anything here. Um, the market is moving maybe in a 150 point range. And uh, it's just absolutely dead quiet. It is a typical Friday uh, in a summer. It, it is very quiet today. Um, down six points on the Dow, S&P up three, NASDAQ down eight. No movement, no change, no nothing. Oil down seventeen. That's the only mover of any significance here, down $1.17 at 67.90 to a barrel. Uh, I think oil is headed much lower. Um, there's an absolute oversupply and there's a definite uh, lack of uh, product needed um, from what I understand beginning to hear a lot of talk now um, it's, it's coming up again and again and again I've talked about this now for months here for, on occasion we're talking about supply chain problems and uh, uh, some of you are probably already noticing it now depending on where you live uh, in the in the world um, in North America you know, where I'm located um, it's beginning to come out now that uh, in certain geographical areas of North America, uh, store shelves are inconsistent. They're, uh, they're, they're full, they're not full, there's gaps. Um, a typical grocery store, a uh, fully, fully stocked grocery store will have 30,000 different items available at any time, uh, always at all times, 30,000 items. Um, you have to think about Wow, where do these all come from? I know, there, I know there are certain suppliers that might bring in a thousand or five hundred or two hundred, but even so, um, those those firms to bring in their product in bulk and then redistribute it to their grocers, the logistics are stunning. And um, there's now talk about how uh, uh, transportation is becoming so expensive and so difficult to manage, so difficult to to, to predict that um, um, in many cases, um, um, in the case of specialized uh, containers for say fresh produce, the containers that hold the produce from basically distribution center farm to uh, a final distribution center in, in your city, for instance, the container is worth more money than the goods in it. And um, these containers are, are the life the lifeblood of fresh produce, whether it's fruit, or vegetables, uh, you name it, um, and uh, fresh meats, um, uh, refrigerated units uh, on rail, on ship, uh, truck. Um, these are these are critical, absolutely critical. And the problem that the supply chain is having is that because of inconsistent COVID policies and states that are like you know, herding cats, they're not unified. The supply chain system is breaking down in the US bit by bit by bit. And people are getting ill. They're, uh, they're, uh, they can't work unless they get vaccinated. They're having difficulty getting vaccinated sometimes, sometimes not. Um, the the, uh, the uh, end client uh, is able to receive or not able to receive. Shippers can't get product out of the country or into the country. China right now, uh, many, many, many of their ports are, are drowning in uh, container ships waiting to load. China's having problems with the virus, the, the recurring virus. They won't admit it, but they are. Uh, there are, there are uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of containers that are not being loaded up and uh, product being brought over. Now, some of the product coming to the U.S. is food. Many of the products from China, of course, are, are, are hard goods. Uh, but we are, we are beginning to see and beginning to hear of consistent uh, pervasive and, and non-stop talk of supply chain problems and this might affect the markets sooner or later it's going to affect the markets the first area you'll see it happen is futures on certain goods like uh, like foods or, or, or commodities you might see futures go kind of wacky for a bit um, the second area you'll see it is where um, uh, shipping companies are not delivering the profits or earnings that they're supposed to deliver because they they have idled rigs idled ships idled truck fleets you name it in, inconsistent uh, not not running properly uh, the next area you're going to see it is when uh, large retailers start to uh, announce profit misses 
or earnings uh, shortages. Um, they're just not hiring, they're not firing on all cylinders when it comes to sales. It's not that the customer doesn't want the product, the customer does. The customer can't get the product, it's not available. The next thing they're talking about now is the end of the stimulus program. Right? These, these checks that have been coming out every month, these unemployment checks and you know, assistance and so on. A lot of this is ending in the next six months going forward because the markets always look forward. And we're now beginning to hear talk about how as the stimulus programs sort of calm down and wind their way out, they will not be renewed. There will not be a renewal, and, and the scramble will be on for people to quote find employment if they can. Those who who you know are are, are, are really uh, hurting out there. Uh, the problem, of course, is with children not being able to go to schools potentially because of the resurgence of a virus virus this fall. There is a shortage of labor, and with a shortage of labor, businesses have problems delivering. With a sh with workers not able to go to work because they can't get their kids to school. There's a cash flow problem. There, there's more, more emphasis on the welfare side of the state. It, it just, it snowballs into a problem, and it snowballs into a slowdown of an economy that is ready to pick up, but is not picking up across the board. And this is where uh, uh, more and more talk is starting to come out. Now, the good news, if you want good news, low rates, no high, no, no higher interest rates. There won't be a bump in interest rates because you're not going to have to cool down an overheated economy. The economy won't overheat. That's one good thing. Inflation, uh, there might be spots in the economy where there's inflation because of shortages, but in other areas of the economy, there will not be inflation because there is no demand for product or not enough demand for product to cause price rises. So we are, we're going to have an inconsistent kind of thing here. We know about the computer chip uh, problem. We know all about the the, 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 the that area, that that is around for years that'll be around for years that has already made its effect known uh and we're going to keep getting more and more of that that will not stop so go to your local car dealer and try to find the vehicle you want in the color you want might not be available only because of uh, the delays or, or or shortages they're only bringing out colors you know the white colored cars the black colored cars uh, the blues and the reds and that's it and everything else is held up because especially orders uh, they're just going to get chips out to the highest selling colors only and get them out the door I, I don't know they're uh, they're uh, scrambling to get fleets reorganized in the car rental business they're trying to get fleets reorganized in the truck rental business the leasing business uh, that is the bread and butter of the auto business producing a vehicle for you with the exact specs you want as especially specialty auto uh, is at the bottom of the heap they, they'll get to you uh, they'll make a nice buck on that one vehicle, but they don't make a million of that specific model. And so you're out of luck. If you're uh, you're happy to drive the, the ST model instead of the XLE, you might find the ST, but you're, you're not going to like it because you want all the bells and whistles. Welcome to America and Canada. We have our we have our tastes and our wants, needs, and desires. Uh, this is what I'm beginning to to hear now everywhere. It isn't This isn't now a one-off story anymore. Six months ago, it was kind of being speculated about. There was a lot of talk about, well, there might be supply chain issues here and there as we kind of ramp back up again. What we didn't anticipate, or maybe what the market didn't anticipate, the street, was that the supply chain problem wouldn't, they didn't think it would be, uh, it wouldn't not just be a North America problem. They didn't think it would be just a, they thought it would be like a local thing, uh, maybe, a, maybe a U.S. thing. Uh, now we're beginning to find out, nope, it's right back to the beginning of manufacturing. So... Inside China, um, uh, Taiwan, um, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, India, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, all these areas where the cheapest labor is located and the cheapest factory pricing is, is at, we've got issues there where they're not getting their parts on time. They're not getting parts on time. So it's something as, as, as a simple as a toaster oven that might require 200 parts to put together doesn't come from one location. The 200 parts comes from four countries, eight countries, and they all come in and then they get assembled and then they get packaged and then they get shipped out in containers around the world to Europe, to Canada, to the US, each with its specialty packaging, each with its specialty electrical outlets, each with its specialty uh, instruction labels and everything else. There's it, there's all kinds of issues with different parts for different pieces, and uh, these factories are, are finding that 
they need to run very efficiently because they have contracted to produce whatever this product is. If it's a toaster, if it's a slow cooker, if it's a uh, you know if it's a microwave oven, whatever whatever the item is that they have to make, mixers, what have you, food processors. These have to be produced in high volume, at high speed, in high efficiency, third world located factories because the owners of these factories and the managers of these plants are absolutely trained and designed to produce, say, 250,000 food processors for the United States for the month of um, May 2022 in the month of whatever in 2021. And those get made in that one month, packaged, shipped out, and now they're producing the food processor for the European market, for the European electrical grid and its safety standards and everything else with different variances and what have you. Um, uh, th th this, is, this is the race to the bottom in the third world that even these guys are having trouble delivering the goods on time. And, and uh, the profit margins at the bottom end are so slim, so micro, that uh, yeah, you go to your Costco store and pick up a uh, KitchenAid uh, uh, mixer with all the bells and whistles for four hundred bucks, three ninety nine or two forty nine, whatever the price is, super discount price to you. What you don't realize, or what you're not thinking about when you buy it in in Peoria or Cincinnati or or, or Atlanta or wherever you're located, this unit cost nineteen twenty bucks to make. It costs uh, another ten dollars to ship. It costs another five or so dollars in in admin. It costs X amount to bring into the country. It costs so much to offload in uh, Long Beach or L.A. or wherever it got shipped off. It costs so much money to be shipped to a distribution center. It costs X amount of dollars to divide that shipment down into breakable small amounts on pallets, where one pallet went to your Costco in your town. Um, through a combination of rail and truck and everything else until it got to your Costco store. By the time that that unit got to your Costco store, uh, Costco is into that unit for $200 and they're selling it to you for $250. They're making the final $50 at retail. And if it's broken, they'll take it back, no questions asked, and give you another one or a refund. And then they'll, they make a deal with their supplier for credits and what have you. Uh, this is standard across the entire spectrum of products. We're talking about millions of items, 30,000 items inside a grocery store that range from, uh, you know, salt and pepper shakers to the salt and pepper itself um, and everything else you need. Um, inside Costco stores, you don't have 30,000 items, but you have specialty items for Costco and they're made on a, on a special contract by the manufacturer. The mixer you're buying in, in, in Costco is made for Costco only. That mixer is not available anywhere else in exactly the same model design with all those features with it. No, only Costco gets that particular version. Made under contract, overseas, in bulk, brought in, and this is how it's done. If there is any issue along the line with supply issues for parts, screws up the timing. If there's any issue with regards to container shipping, screws up timing of delivery. Any issue with respect to labor problems in, in the US with, with port workers, strikes at the railroad, trucking problems, uh, personnel shortages, that screws up delivery to the Costco store. And that means the Costco store uh, in your area, you'll begin to notice little by little, you'll look up, instead of looking at the product line at eye level, take a look up top at the top of all those uh, shelves up there where there are usually pallet loads of extra merchandise already in stock for the next month waiting. And soon, because this is now August, soon those pallets up there are supposed to be full of November and December Christmas product. And there's delays. And uh, this is going to come home to roost. And it might come home to roost in an ugly way by about the first quarter of next year, second quarter of next year, when earnings reports come out. And they are not delivering the reports. They're not delivering the final results that were indicated by analysts because of supply chain problems all the way down the line in any one of those, any one of those screws up follows up the, the the whole works we'll follow that and uh see how it goes anyway that's what i'm hearing uh and how i'm interpreting it in plain english for you that uh it's not it's not just costco it's it's home hardware it's uh every clothing store every shoe store 
uh, go to the shopping mall. It's every retailer, uh, period, uh, outdoor centers, uh, um, uh, sports, uh, sports stores for sports equipment, um, medicines. It, 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 it's endless. We are, we are in Canada and the USA, we are importers. We import a lot of goods from overseas. Why? Cheaper to be made overseas for us to buy with our strong currency, giving us a higher standard of living. Simple as that. We export this. We do export in Canada lumber, uh, coal, oil, uh, iron ore, nickel. Yeah, the USA exports everything under the sun. We export manufactured goods as well, of course, obviously in the high-tech world and so on. But we import the basics. We import the cheap stuff that for us is cheap to buy, cheaper to have made overseas than to make locally. Uh, despite the fact that it could create jobs locally, we are pushing more for the higher end jobs than the lower end jobs. And we're letting Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, uh, the entire Asia area, we're letting them fight each other to supply us with crap, just garbage. <laughs> Uh, our forks and knives and pots and pans and dishes and kitchen items and uh, our furniture, our TVs, uh, you name it, all overseas produced under license by American, Canadian, European owned corporations imported under exclusive deals. And, uh, and we're paying uh, a lower price having them made there than having them made here, just the way it, just the way it is. This is all at the moment in flux uh, as we go forward here with delivery issues. There you have it. That's uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. B's take here, Uncle Bruce's take on what's happening over there. The Dow right now up only two points, uh, S&P up four, NASDAQ down three. We got a nothing burger going on here today, folks, and there will be a nothing burger all day long on the big markets. Uh, we've got Robinhood up four bucks to 52.13, SoFi down 247 to 14.98, just sitting under 15 here. We at GameStop uh, was positive earlier today. Uh, when I was off the air, it got up to uh, 163.55. It's back to 161.40, down 95 cents. The range today is a nothing burger. The low today, 157.57 for GameStop. The high, 163.55. I mean, we, we've had a $6 swing today. That's a nothing burger on GameStop. 800,000 shares traded. You know how quiet that is. That is dead quiet. ATIP. Uh, down seven cents at 419. AMC up 60 cents, uh, uh, holding a gain of 60 cents at 3367. Matterport 1509 down a quarter. Did get over the break even line earlier today. It was around 1215 or so. Uh, the stock peaked out and uh, did eke a gain to about, what was that? Maybe, uh, let's see, about four, 1547. Um, now at 1509 on 1 1.4 million shares. Very quiet day today. 23andMe released their financials before the open today. The hope was that uh, that would spur the market, that would uh, maybe there would be a, a, a move on the stock, maybe the management could get ahead of the market and, and, and spur confidence in the stock, uh, talk about how great things are going to get, uh, what the plans are, whatever the objective was. Um, it didn't work. Um, and unfortunately for 23andMe, they were, and many other companies today, were dominated by the results that came out last night from Disney and from, uh, I believe, DoorDash and also from SoFi. And the SoFi uh, thunder uh, did not help. I mean, SoFi trading over 50 million shares today uh, has absolutely dominated the, uh, the trading. And 23andMe had no chance to get anywhere going here. It opened at roughly 7.95, got to 7.99 for like a nanosecond, quickly went into this $7 and, uh, oh, uh, 59 60 cent range by about uh, oh 10 40 in the morning uh hit the low of the day of 7 32 just around 12 30 this afternoon and then took a run it had a run of from 7 32 and it went all the way up to about 7 uh, 90 or so it, it got up to about 7 90 just short of the break even level um in about 30 minutes it did that nice climb solid then gave half of it back and it's been flatlining ever since it's now 766 down 27 cents on 3.4 million shares and so we have a, a three to three and a half percent drop on the day here um, no uh, no news uh, anywhere on the servers that are being uh, being highlighted uh, so there doesn't seem to be an organized follow-through uh, promotion campaign going on by the company today they did the release 
got written up by a couple of uh, uh, news wires, um, and I got nothing. And I don't know if they've been on CNBC. I haven't heard about it. I haven't seen anything about it. And so it's a quiet one for 23andMe today. Have they got a lot to talk about next week, maybe? Are they doing any kind of a road show? Are they doing any show and tells? I have no idea. It's uh, it's awfully quiet, and it's frustrating. Just frustrating. Fifth wall up eight cents to twelve fifty six. Vector down two cents to ten fifty two. Navsite Holdings today is the day they had their shareholder meeting. Navsite had their shareholder meeting to become Spear or Spire uh, Spire uh, uh, Global. Uh, that should have gone through. Uh, the stock's at nine thirty seven, down twenty seven cents. There's absolutely no uh, no news anywhere. Um, absolute quiet, uh, it's like crickets. Uh, the volume on the stock today with this major event, 76,600 shares traded on NAFSITE. Absolutely no volume whatsoever. Uh, I'm, a, I'm going to guess and I'm going to speculate because I can't tell you officially, there's nothing official here, but I think the shares should start trading Aspire Global on Monday. But I could be wrong. I have no idea. There is no communication anywhere from anybody as to what's going on. So do the folks at NavSite uh, kind of wash their hands of it? Oh, hey, we've been taken over. It's now Spire. Is Spire ready to take this thing on? Is Spire ready to become a public company? They have already been given buy recommendations up into the 20s uh, by analysts. Um, I would really like to see something happen here with the Spire people. I will give them a pass today. I'll even give them a pass on Monday, but by Tuesday, there had better been some, be something going on here uh, from the new management because uh, this is ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't understand. If I were a major shareholder in this new company, um, I would be insisting for weeks now that I want to see the plans. I want, you show me that you have personnel in place to handle yourself as a publicly traded company. Show me who's, who's in charge. Who's going to be running this thing? Who's in charge of communication? Who's in charge of investor relations? Who does investor relations refer to? Who does who do who do they get marching orders from? And what will the marching orders be? And on and on and on. Having been a president of a public traded company way back when, these are what basic being public 101 questions. I'm not asking trick questions here. Uh, who's running the show and what's the show going to be about? Nothing today. I'm finding that very frustrating, but that is what we have at the moment. Uh, CYXT Sixtera is sitting at 976 down 26 cents today. The low of the day was a little while after just after two o'clock today. We hit 960. We're now at 976, and uh, the volume on, on the stock 473,000 shares. They did do some show and tells this week, uh, and they did uh, they did get out there. They did release earnings. I think they've got a conference call on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see what they have to do for next week. Uh, Vanek Vectors SMH up a dollar and nine cents, one dollar nine cents to two sixty one. Home Depot down two fifty six. IBM up three cents to one forty three ten. The heartbreaker it is. The Dow is up ten points. Microsoft up two twenty five. Apple up fourteen cents. Tesla down five sixty eight. Bed Bath and Beyond down a buck. BlackBerry down twenty nine cents. Royal Caribbean down a dollar eighty two right now. 78.52 is the last trade on Royal Caribbean. That's the low of the day, roughly. Norwegian at the low of the day, down 84. Carnival, low of the day, down 53. Amazon down 14.55 a share. Facebook up 33 cents. Google is up 2.95. Target uh, down 76. JP Morgan down a buck 91. Over at uh, Goldman Sachs, we're down 4.38 to 410 dollars a share. That will be a 700 dollar stock within a year. Um, Nvidia up 2.20. Cisco up a penny right now. Walt Disney holding a gain, but not like they had this morning. Disney is up $2.35 to one hundred eighty one sixty four. This morning they were as high as one eighty seven fifty eight, but they've given a lot of that back. I have no faith in the Disney stock right now. There are people out there who are convinced that this is great. This is fantastic. They're on their way back. It's going to be just, oh, kumbaya by the campfire people. Start singing. I don't think so. I think this stock is on its way to 150 bucks a share. They're trading at 50 times earnings. Uh, I don't think they can generate the earnings uh, going forward that people think they can. Um, the parks are not going to be at 100% capacity for the rest of this year. They've lost the summer. Summer's over. It, it, it's, it's August. Uh, we have several more months here of uncertainty. Uh, Florida is a cesspool. Florida is an absolute basket case for the to tourism business. Absolute basket case. Uh, the outside world looking into Florida is going, <laughs> I'm not going down there. Are you kidding me? 
No, thank you. Uh, Florida, with that governor down there, absolute lunacy, total disaster, hospitalizations through the roof. Uh, the perception is, is complete idiocy. No one wants to go. Uh, families would rather go to L.A. than to go to uh, or Orlando for safety reasons. Now, there are the diehards that you can't talk out of, and there are the freedom fighters who want to go maskless and just want to be, you know, I'm American, I can do whatever I want. God bless you. Knock yourself out. It's yours. It, you have it. You can, you can have it. But I can tell you where the profits come from. The Florida profits for Disney comes from the outside world. You've got to have foreign tourists coming into Orlando because I can tell you that a couple of good old boys coming in for a weekend from Alabama, hanging out in Orlando, aren't going to be dropping 5000 bucks a night in Disneyland like high-end tourists from Japan or China or Europe do. That you've got a whole different group of folks here. You got these folks who are looking for a, a high-end quality meal like a turkey leg, as opposed to a filet mignon with scallops. We're talking a whole different ball game here. Disney is going to get taken to the cleaners this year, as will Universal, because they are not going to generate the money in Florida that they thought they were going to generate. Because those high-end tourists are not coming. And I'm sorry, folks. Uh, I, I don't care how many locals come on in to enjoy the rides. It's just not working out. They're, they they talk the talk about opening the parks and allowing everything just to run again, but the money isn't made at Disney World with folks riding roller coasters and going to see the animals. The money is made at Disneyland, at Disney World, where the folks are staying at the $1,000 a night suites at, at the high-end resorts the inside Disneyland's property. These are the folks who are getting the, the private tours. These are the folks who are buying jewelry inside the stores in disney world the high-end stuff really the stuff that you and i might look at it go wow can't believe it's this much money these are the folks that have these collections of this kind of stuff in their homes around the world um they're not coming in those customers are not coming in to the u.s right now and they're not coming into florida and why should they because florida is a disaster it is a joke anyway there you have it that's just me from the outside telling you folks what we hear what we see what we're noticing what a mess absolute mess um, not looking good at all what else can i tell you who else can i make mad today who else can i upset i haven't said texas so i'm being nice i haven't said texas uh yeah unbelievable uh yeah the, the disney stock is uh i wouldn't touch the disney stock with a 10-foot cattle prod right now 50 times earnings and i don't think they can maintain it they keep talking about, oh, we're, we're doing live streaming. We're, we're doing our movies. It's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah, okay. That means if you are counting on live streaming at Disney to make up the money that you're not getting from the parks, you can't have both. You either are going to make your money from the parks or you're going to make money from live streaming. If you're not going to make money from the parks, the problem with the parks is that you have 70,000 full-time employees handling Disney World. You got to pay those people not to work. You got to pay those people to maintain those parks while you're waiting for the people to come back. And when they do come back, they won't be streaming as much because they're going to go out and see movies in the in movie theaters. And that means the streaming service will drop off. You can't have both. One is doing well because of the COVID. The other one will do bad, will do well without the COVID. But together, the two of them, it's not going to happen. And that's where the, 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 the problem lies. Um, this is this is another thing with regard to the Disney stock. So I don't know, folks. Uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens here. It's uh, it's uh, it's a big fat mess. I'll tell you that right now. It is a big fat mess. So far, fourteen ninety eight uh, down two forty seven right now. Uh, what can I say? Um, it's just. Uh, it's uh, you know under pressure here. Today's the day where we get the flush out of a whole bunch of shares, 54.5 million shares of SoFi. We get that going through, uh, and uh, everyone who wants out gets out, and they got out. But someone, and remember, think about this. Today, we traded 55 million SoFi shares. The question is, who's buying it? Now, we know that half of this trading is probably day flipping. It's just turnover. Fair enough. But the other half is actual buying of stock. Who's picking it up and putting it away? That's what I want to know. Um, I have a feeling that this is being gobbled up by long-term holders that are going to become a force inside this company going forward. And it's it's for the good of those shareholders who have it. 
If you're a shareholder of SoFi, you have to be happy to see this kind of volume today. You're hoping to see more of this kind of volume. I don't know if we'll see this on an ongoing basis, but I'm really happy with over 50 million today. I want this stock to get to this level and stay here. Um, but I'm curious to see who's been picking this stuff up because it's a lot of paper that's been bought up. I know there's been a lot of turnover, but a lot has been put away. Interesting stuff. GameStop, 160.50 up, uh, down a buck 85. We're now down two dollars. Excuse me. Um, ATIP down eight cents. AMC hanging onto a 35 cent gain. Matterport down 28 cents. Ma uh, 23 and me at 758 down 35 cents. Unfortunately, we're not getting a good day there at all. A fifth wall is up eight. Vectors up five. Navsite down 30. Sextero down 40. IBM up nine cents, breaking everybody's heart right now. That's what we have. That's where we're at. That is the latest on this market as I see it. Uh, thank you again, everyone who's been here all week long. As always, following this channel, thank you to those of you who are members. Thank you to those of you who are subscribers. Thank you to those of you who are just casual visitors to the channel. Love having you here. Hope you're enjoying the show or tolerating Bruce's rants. Um, thank you for all that. Uh, we're going to uh, shift the uh, channel now to uh, member-only commentary. Um, membership has its privilege, one of which is uh, you get to comment here exclusively among members. Uh, and we thank you for uh, be, being here today. Uh, and please consider becoming a member of this channel. Uh, we are on the air tomorrow. Um, I'm on the air tomorrow at noon Eastern time live and Sunday noon live um, on this, uh, well, through this channel, but through private classes. I'm going to be doing two private classes this weekend. We're ramping them up again, and um, we're going to be talking about option trading tomorrow. We're going to be showing examples on my whiteboard over here. We're going to be popping up some uh, butterfly spread option strategies uh, that some of you, many of you, have been asking for. Um, we're going to be talking about call options and put option strategies with regards to the stocks we follow. We're going to be talking about the actual stocks we follow. I'm going to pop some up there for you so that you can just see what how you can play the market. One thing that you'll find interesting if you uh, come into the class tomorrow, um, some of you might be shocked at this, but uh, you will be able to, uh, I'll show you how you will be able to control, in the case of GameStop, for example, um, you can control $32,000 worth of stock for less than $500. Um, yeah, uh, if you have $5,000 to play with, uh, I will be able to show you how you can control three hundred thousand dollars worth of stock with less than five grand. Um, that's one of the strategies we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, and you don't need to be uh, right uh, where the stock has to move ten percent for you to make any money. Uh, you you actually can make a lot of money with a little bit of a move because the leverage is in, in your favor to such a degree, and your risk is uh, virtually eliminated because it going in you know exactly what your risk factor is and what your upside factor is. Um, I think some of you are going to be shocked at how, how easy this is to, this is to do. Uh, but it, I needed to get you guys as a whole to this level here with regard to how much talk we've been doing with regards to options and how they work. It is only now that I can start showing you these kinds of strategies that uh, most of you will quickly get. We'll explain it tomorrow in plain English, believe me. Uh, Jen will be here moderating the chat, the questions from all of you as class members so that you'll have no trouble following this story. But uh, I think you're going to be surprised, pleasantly surprised, maybe shocked at how little money you need to control hundreds of thousands of dollars of stock. And all you need is a sliver of a profit on the trade to make a very nice return on your money. I think you're going to like this. Uh, so join us tomorrow for the uh, for the uh, butterfly class. And on uh, on uh, Sunday, we're going to talk about another topic. And this one, I, you've been begging me for this since January, a lot of you. Uh, Bruce, how do you pick your stocks? What is it you look for in public tra traded companies? What is it you're looking for in the financials? What are you looking for with all the variables out there to determine whether or not a stock is investable or not? H how can you help me figure out how to find my next investment? And because down the road, a few years from now, when you're retired and you're sitting on the beach somewhere, very rich man with all the donations people have been giving you, you're not going to be on the air anymore. I have to do this on my own. How do I teach my kids? Show me how to find how to find great trading stocks as potential candidates to invest in. That is Sunday's class. That's what we will do. I will try to squeeze that in in two hours uh, if I can. Um, and I look forward to having you join me. If you would like to join us for our classes this weekend, send me an email. Uh, just uh, pop an email right over here to brucefarmer at hotmail.com. 
and say, uh, hey, Bruce, I would like to be in your class on Saturday or on Sunday, both days. Please send me a registration. Um, I will send you an email right away after the show is over tonight where you can register to join the class and hang out with Jennifer and myself, and uh, we will uh, we'll go through it with you. Looking forward to that. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, uh, for your support of this channel. Thank you. Uh, next week, by Tuesday, Wednesday, those classes will be edited and will be available for viewing on my website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca, at your leisure. You can pick up those classes if you like. They'll be edited. You can watch those at your leisure as you can right now. I have eight classes already on the website. Lessons one through eight are up and running, and uh, folks have been picking them up now for a few weeks. Check them out at your leisure. Let's see what happens. There you go. That's the deal. Um, what can we say? There's where we're at. Um, Odin's Pumpkin, uh, thank you for the donation. Uh, Branson's Other SPAC. Uh, SPC started as a SPAC at 10 bucks. It reached 25 and it's down to 11. It took five months to recover. However, the stock has reached 50. Guys, gals, be patient with your stocks. It will reward you. Uh, that's the thing that I, you know, I do the best I can uh, to explain to people. Um, all of these SPACs that have been listed now uh, and have now are now converting into full-fledged companies like today, Spire Global, uh, 23andMe, uh, Matterport, SoFi, all of them. Uh, you have to remind yourself sometimes, uh, you have to make sure to remind yourselves that these companies were created by a lot of uh, talented people who put up a lot of money to get all this done, uh, to create a SPAC from scratch and to be SEC compliant and to be compliant with the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ, uh, to get through all of that through a brokerage firm, all the due diligence required, um, this requires uh, a ton of money, uh, time, experience, and money. That's number one. Number two, the private companies that take over the SPACs, the vetting that is done between the SPAC people and its legal representatives and the public company people to vet each other. And then thirdly, the, vet the vetting that is done by the SEC on this merger and the exchanges is exhausting. It is, it's crushing. It, it, it is, it is, I mean, if you're a senior executive of a publicly, of a privately, a public, a private company that's going to become a publicly traded company, I'll get it out. You're a management person high up in a private company. You're now going to become a manager of a publicly traded corporation. You have to pass all kinds of smell tests uh, at all kinds of levels with all kinds of agencies. And this takes a lot of due diligence and um, the skeletons in the closet have to be revealed and then we have to make sure that these people who are running this private company are suitable to be managers of a publicly traded company with public money at, at risk. Uh, this takes a lot of money. This takes a lot of time. This takes a lot of heartache. This takes a lot of work. And I can tell you that uh, all of these folks had to be convinced by many, many people, why should we bother becoming a publicly traded company? What's it, what's in it for us? Uh, because one of the things they notice on these publicly traded companies is that once you are a publicly traded stock, you go up and down in price. This is what these folks notice. They notice that when a private company becomes a public company, their prices of their shares go up and down. And one of the questions I'm sure they're asked all the time is, well, what, what, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's it like when you're part of a public company and your, sh your stock goes down in price? Do your neighbors all of a sudden hate you? Do you get hate mail? Uh, what's, you know, what, what's this like? I mean, this is a crazy world in which we live and people's money is kind of really important to people. But there are times where stocks do well and stocks don't do well and find their way and everything else. What, why should I bother taking my private company with all of my partners and family members and associates? and everything? Why should we become a public company and be subjected to this absolute nonstop uh, uh, surveillance and, and commentary and opinion? Uh, one of the reasons can be uh, the shares can do very, very well if the company does very, very well, which makes people very, very wealthy. That's a very strong reason to do it, but sometimes the price paid can be really tough. And um, you look at the SPACs that I'm talking to you about every day here, and uh, 
okay, SoFi is at fourteen ninety six. It's not like at three ninety six. At fourteen ninety six, came out at ten bucks. It's at fourteen ninety six, but it's been to twenty five dollars. And uh, the SoFi people are going to say to you, if you were asking them about, hey, why is your stock down here? If they're going to say to you, hey, this stock was never at twenty five dollars when it was, uh, you know, when I ran the company. I mean, when we came in, we came in at ten. Uh, we've been around for 11 years. Uh, we're at 1496 and we're growing like crazy. We think we're doing great. It's you guys that are problem, the problem. You guys are selling the stock before the stock gets to where it's going to go. Well, everyone has their opinion on that, whether that's right or wrong. It's ATIP. There are the insiders at ATIP that are really upset right now. They're really upset. Uh, they are into stock at 10 bucks a share and they're sitting at 417 going, why did we do this? Uh, there are founders of that company with the, the, the hedge fund that created this whole thing. They're down $800 million. They're not happy. Uh, you can imagine they're making moves right now to rectify stuff. Uh, they've got a ways to go. Over at Matterport, $15 a share. 23 and me, 754 Richard Branson, his group, all of his contacts. The folks at uh, 23 and me, all the contacts they have there, they're all upside down on the stock. They're all down 25%. You can imagine that if you if you think any of them are happy, any one of them are happy right now, think again. None of them are happy right now. They're all upset. They're all looking for reasons and uh, solutions to have this market not be here. But they're also realists to understand the market is the market. And sometimes the investors of certain stocks are not in line with management on the same plane right now. And that is just the way of the world. It all equals itself out. Sooner or later, it equals itself out, but it might not be in the, as fast as you might want it to be. That is the trick. The Warren Buffett solution is simple. Just wait it out. Just wait out quality management. Quality management always delivers the results in the end. They make changes when it's necessary to get results. That's what quality management does. They, they make changes to get results. Might be a year, it might be three months, might be six months, might be two years, whatever it takes, the results will be there with quality management. Mr. Buffett has made a fortune for a lot of people and himself by waiting it out, driving a lot of his followers crazy because they're just going, God, why doesn't he do something? But sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. Sit it out, wait it out, let it happen. That's the way it goes. VACQ up five cents to 10.59. We've had quite the week here. NAV site now to 9.22, down 42 cents. You've got to be wondering how those uh, insiders feel about this. Uh, I'd, I'd love to be a fly in the wall here. Uh, Sextera at 9.50, still had a good week this week. Have to wait this out. IBM up 18 cents, breaking everybody's heart at 143.26. Uh, that's the way we're going. We're up six points on the Dow right now on a nothing burger day. Anyway, there you have it. Welcome to the show. Uh, how many legs are in butterfly spreads? Uh, uh, at the moment, I'm going to be talking about two legs. Uh, we're going to talk about the body and two wings, actually. Not even legs, but wings. Um, but we'll go into a number of scenarios uh, that will uh, cover quite a number of these uh, angles here. Um, I think you're going to find it rather amazing um, how you end up in control of a whole bunch of stock for not a lot of money and not a lot of risk. This is the other thing about the butterfly situation that is so cool. You can get involved in a in a thirty thousand dollar spread or thirty thousand dollar investment uh, of stock, and your risk is uh, one hundred fifty bucks, two hundred bucks, fifty dollars. Uh, incredibly light, incredibly low. Uh, we're going to get into that. I think you're going to find that well worth your uh, price of admission. Uh, Joseph, thank you for being here and thank you for this donation. What do you think is going on with SoFi's price movement right now? It's uh, like a barcode, just full of candles back and forth, looking for some Uncle Bruce wisdom. Joseph, you know, I was looking at the quote, uh, looking at the chart today of this stock, and I, I'm just blown away at just how flat the the chart is. It, I, I'm just amazed by it. Um, uh, for example, here's the one-day chart of SoFi right here. Look at that. Look at that chart. It's just flatlining all day long. I mean, the low on the market today, uh, fourteen ninety one. The high today, uh, during market hours, fifteen fifty three. We're only sixty two cents between the high and the low. We started down a dollar ninety. We didn't even, you know, go down from seventeen odd down to here. We just opened lower right off the bat. 
And I'm looking at this going, wow, this, if this isn't, uh, does, does this look uh, manufactured or what? It's, it blows my mind. I just have, a, 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 my gut is telling me that there are buyers basically lurking in the weeds, sitting by going, just bring in all the stock you want, people. We'll take it off you. Around this 15 level, we'll buy it all. And that's what's been going on. They've been buying it all. Uh, 55.9 million shares. This is not a stock that has been abandoned, has been orphaned, has no uh, no following anywhere. This has following, deep pocketed following. And I believe there's a serious amount of money into this deal from SoftBank, from Japan. Serious backing there. And I believe that uh, friends of friends and associates of associates are buying up all this paper that's coming in. They're just, just give it to me. Just, just give it to me. No problem. No problem. Wait, you're giving it up today for 250 less than yesterday at this time. That's okay. We'll take it all from you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I, I just have this impression that the buyers have got a long-term time frame in mind, a very high price point in mind for their exit. Um, that will make you go, are you kidding me? They, they want how much for this? Uh, that's why they're buying it. There's a reason why, I guess today, $750 million of stock is being picked up by investors of this company without any problem whatsoever. Uh, you got 10000 for sale? You're up. You got 100000 for sale? You're up. No problem. No problem. How much you got? Just give it up. Give it up. Um, those of you out there who've been nibbling away on this thing, I commend you. I absolutely commend you. Um, you're doing it right. This is a day where this is a giveaway of gargantuan proportions. The stock yesterday, just on speculation of what was coming up, went to 1770, 1750 a share. Uh, you're going to see higher highs than that, much higher highs. This 56 million shares that we've had coming through here will not be in your way. For the stock to go to 30 bucks a share anymore there is it's the way i look at this i look at this as 56 million fewer shares between here and 30 bucks a share 56 million fewer that have to be bought you don't have to buy them at 18 you don't have to buy them at 20 you have to buy them at 23 you don't have to buy them at 28 these 50 odd million are not in the way anymore between here and 30 bucks a share which means the stock will go to 30 even faster than it would have before that's that's how I take on it. My my take goes. What is it going to take? Uh, the bank charter. They nail that bank charter, which I think this is why the buying is so serious. The buying is massive because they know that bank charter comes in changes the entire complexion of this corporation. This company will grow by tenfold within two years of that bank charter landing in their lap. It is a license to blow this company wide open to another level. Huge. The amount of capital that will be made available to SoFi from the bond market will blind your will blow your mind. Uh, there will be, in my opinion, I can see these guys doing five and ten billion dollar financings through bond offerings with virtual cheap cheap interest rates, where they'll write their own loans. I, I just I sense it. They they know they're going to need it because they have two point six million customers now. They're going to have five million customers a year from now. They're probably going to have 10 million customers two years from now. They need billions of additional dollars to lend out to people to take the spread between what they charge you and what they pay for the money. And the bank charter is going to make it so easy to borrow billions and billions and billions of capital. Uh, the buyers of this stock right now, all day today, who've just been saying, give it up, I'll take it all, I'll take all you want. They're saying, they're saying to to you or they're saying to me uh, through what their actions are that yeah we're, we're happy to buy this at 1494 15 bucks a share we're delighted just delighted yeah we're, we're, we're actually lucky that's down here it backed off this is our last shot this might be the last time we get this stuff in bulk down here because going forward this is going to dry out this the free trading stock is going to dry out and uh, between 14 and 30 might only take 100 million of volume to move it there might only take 200 million of volume turnover of course it won't take much um and then keep it there 20 million shares a day it'll, it'll stay there uh this is going to be interesting this is really going to be something that that's my take joseph i i'm i'm like i said i'm really excited 
for those of you who are uh, who are picking this up, if you're picking this up and you've added it to your portfolio, I think you're going to be just fine. Um, I'm convinced that uh, this thing is a winner. Um, I like the fact that with 56.7 million traded, um, this stock has only switched has only fluctuated 60 cents all day today from low to high. If that that right there screams power to me, screams stability. Don't like the fact it's down 252. I don't like it. I'm not happy about it, but I accept it as part of the way this market works. But I really respect the power behind this company. They have shown me stuff today that uh, I suspected was there, and now I see it. it it's as plain as, as the trading right in front of your face. 56 million at about $15 a share. Do the math, people. That is a serious amount of money that is trading hands. We, we might end up with a billion dollars in trading today on this stock. A billion today. On a SPAC, a former SPAC, that is power. That That is huge. Anyway, there you have it. Um, what can I say? Uh, you know, what can I tell you? It, it is the way it is. Uh, it's what we have. And I can't, I can't change that, uh, can't change the price. I can only tell you, I think it's going to go higher. Um, there's a billion reasons why I think it's going to go higher today versus yesterday. Uh, a billion more reasons. That's the way I look at it. ATIP down 11 cents. Matterport down 45. Very disappointing day today on Matterport. Um, ME uh, 754. Uh, although I like Matterport and ME very much, I think that they will have a turnaround. I think management will be talking to each other all weekend long. Uh, they will be reviewing the whole week. They'll be reviewing the last several weeks. And they will be plotting their next several weeks going forward. Uh, they will not be sitting on their hands and going, oh, woe is me. I just don't see that. Uh, fifth wall, up 17 cents, taking a shot here at the end of the day. We have eight minutes to go. Uh, we uh, just went up to 12.65, up 17 cents. The low today was 12.36, half an hour into the opening. We've been kind of hanging around all day, around 12.55 all day. But in the last 10 minutes, we've went up a dime. To go up to 12.65. Uh, Vector up 12 cents, uh, coming on a little bit at the very end here. Uh, Navsite and Sextera dropping off at the end of the day today. I think the folks are gone for the weekend. Uh, that's just the way it looks to me. Uh, Vanek uh, up a dollar. Home Depot down 2.92. I IBM up two cents. Heartbreaker. Uh, the Dow down 11.48. If the Dow does not have an up day today, that'll break a streak of quite a number of days in a row where we have not had an up day. Um, but I can tell you that uh, yesterday's close was a record high close. And if the uh, market closes down 10 point, whatever points, it's now down 9.3, uh, it'll be nine points from a record all time high. So um, the SP is up three points. It is right now, if it closes here, it's a new all time high close for the SP 500. NASDAQ down seven points. Uh, it's down 0 0.05 percentage points. <laughs> Uh, five uh, one hundredths of a percent is what the NASDAQ is down today. Um, tell you, does that tell you something? No one's there. Nobody's there. They're all gone for the weekend. Uh, that's what that means. Uh, man, oh man. Uh, anyway, Zach, I'm just dropping in for a quick hello, and I'm going to give you a thumbs up. So the rest of the folks here, if you missed the morning's Friar Club meeting, go watch later. Happy Friday to everybody. I guess yeah, there was a bit of a roast here this morning. Uh, they were roasting yours truly here this morning. And you can always check that out. We, we did have some fun because the markets weren't any fun. We might as well do something else. Anyway, uh, what can I say? I just can't stop from buying more SoFi. I might have to file with the SEC real soon. Uh, Michael, you can't get enough of this stuff. I, I'm telling you, when it's all said and done, uh, at the end of the day, this stuff here, you're going to wish you had put in more. Uh, 1494, uh, 56 million buying power. Man, oh man, 57.4 million now buying power at 1494 to 151510. Uh, that's a pretty strong statement right there. That is pretty serious stuff here. Uh, what can I say? Uh, what else is going on? Um, let's see. Um, eh, what can I say here? I don't know where else we're at. Um, no troll. The troll's gone away, I guess. So maybe I scared the troll off, or maybe he ran out of money. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, Oak Street or 400 more so far. 14.95. Thank you very much. There you go. Um, yeah, talking about the vaccine is now political. These people are crazy. That's true. Uh, the vaccine has become political, and that's not my fault. Um, <laughs> if if you're making the vaccine to be political, you are missing the point uh, of the survival of the human race. 
and, and which I find funny. You know, I find that funny that the survival of the human race is political. I, I, I'm going, seriously? You can't even agree that the survival of the human race is not political? I mean, my God, I don't know what to say. Tony's back in jail, says Blair. Um, anyway, sometimes we say stuff about what's going on that people don't like, and that's just the way it is. And uh, if you can't handle it, you can't handle it. I get it. Um, you know, sorry if that's the way it's going for you. Uh, there's only so much we can do. Uh, Got to tell you the truth, as I see it in plain English, and right now in plain English, it's looking pretty stupid out there. There's some really stupid stuff going on out there in certain areas. And I'm going to call it out because I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Nope, I'm too old to hold it in anymore. I don't need, don't need to hold that nonsense in anymore. Anyway, there you go. Uh, wow, uh, what can I say? Um, another fun day in the big, the big world of the markets here. Uh, thick skin, buy the dips. Uh, that's right. Um, I like Uncle Bruce's morning rants. Keep up the good stuff. Thank you, everybody. Uh, here, I want 100 ME. I'm keeping it for the long. There you go. Uh, yeah, uh, I recommend that. Uh, 756, it's a steal. It's a, it's a bargain. They're giving it away. 1490 Matterport, giving it away. Uh, ATIP, 415, giving it away. 15 bucks on SoFi right now. It just popped up. We're down to four minutes. Uh, NAF site, 922, bargain. Sextera, 940, bargain. You only got a taste of Sextera the last two days. You just got a little taste. Went up 123 on, what was it, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hit 10.04 yesterday. This is just a taste of what's to come on Sextera. But, you know, you have to have uh, the long-term vision, and you've got to hold through the tough days. That's the, that's the price you pay for being a, a good investor, a top-notch successful investor. Preach, Uncle Bruce, preach. Uh, there you go. <laughs> you don't even have freedom of speech anymore. Love your comments on SoFi, Uncle Bruce. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Um, let's see. Uh, let's, uh, don't mess with uh, my freedoms. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, yep. Um, let's go. Yeah, ME, uh, GameStop, uh, uh, trying to close under a million volume again. Right now, GameStop is so showing 949, 949,000 with three minutes to go. It's got 250 more SoFi, 1496, trading at 15 right now. Uh, it's stupid. It's not political. It's about staying alive. That's it. Uh, what can I say? Yep. If you want to pick up 100,000 shares, this is how you do it. Right here, right now. $15 a share on SoFi. And it will go higher. Uh, you just have to, uh, you know, tough it out. That's it. That's what it is. Uh, there you go. Uh, thank God the internet didn't exist during Spanish flu. Uh, they'd have double the casualties. <laughs> <laughs> All the freedom fighters. Oh my gosh. Oh man. That was, that was unbelievable. The story on that Spanish flu was so scary. So tragic. Anyway, we like it, Uncle Bruce. Thank you, everybody. ATIP dip. Uh, there you go. 415 on ATIP. Matterport 1490. Uh, 23 me, 755. $15 on SoFi. Uh, 162.06. We're down 29 cents on GameStop here. We're coming out uh, right around 162. Those of you who have written contracts on GameStop, congratulations. You made a bunch of money again this week. The uh, options market is just handing it to you by the thousands. And I say, take it, take it, take it. Uh, what can I say? Uh, the most powerful country on earth gave you the most powerful combatant to this pandemic, and you dismissed it. Hilarious. There you go. There, there. That exactly sums it up right there. That exactly. The American taxpayer has helped fund the creation of life-saving vaccines, and yet Americans don't trust their own people to save themselves. It, it, it's just incredible how un-American Americans are to themselves. It, it just it defies logic out in the outside world. We look at this going, you've got to be kidding me. Really? This is political? Oh, you got to be kidding me. It's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, my wife agreed to take me back if I sold my soul five. Um, I sold my wife. Uh, there you go, Austin. Uh, <laughs> uh, call the herd. Uh, that's right. That's right. Uh, what Mike Hunt sent uh, uh, times about Michael. Uh, what you said a thousand times over. Uh, Lisa agrees with you. Going postal here. I was just checking, refreshing my stock. Um, buy her back for less. She's on sale. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, I bought one August 20, uh, $2,730 Google call at earnings last month, and I did not get out during earnings call. I'm down 45% with one week left. Do you think I have time to recover, or should I take my loss now on Google? Uh, the Google stock, 
Oh man, it's twenty-seven sixty-eight, and you've got a twenty-seven thirty call, and it expires next week. All right, I see what you mean. Well, uh, you know the shares can run up a hundred, two hundred in a week, but uh, I don't know. Um, we're closed now, by the way, and uh, you know twenty-seven seventy is where it's trading at. You need you need help. There's no doubt about that. Um, uh, I would see Monday, maybe Monday by Tuesday, you'll have to make a move. Hopefully, you can still make a rollover. I don't know, my friend. Uh, let's see how the market reacts. Um, don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that one. That's a tough one. Uh, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, butterfly spreads are very cool. We'll be covering it tomorrow. Join us for that one. Um, yeah. Anyway, there you are. There you are. There you are. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Sold a covered call for GameStop to buy 100 shares of SoFi at $14.99. Beautiful job. Well done. Larry, you're absolutely right. The bells have gone. We're done. Uh, we're finished for the day and the week. Uh, the Dow ended up with about a 16-point gain, so the Dow hit a new all-time record high. It was down 10 points five minutes ago. Came up 16 uh, to close up 16, but a new record high. S&P up 7 points, record high close. NASDAQ up 6 points, but not a record high close. Oil down a dollar eleven a barrel to sixty seven ninety eight. There you go. Interesting. The bells are going uh, right on. Even the cowbells are going. It's no wonder with all the misinformation being spread around, no one trusts the biased and on dishonest media. As if media is dishonest all of a sudden, which which is also surprising. Like all of a sudden, media is dishonest. All media, every single person is dishonest in media. When did this become the normal? Um, Man, I think we need Walter Cronkite to come back here. We all trusted him. Uh, what can I say? Um, <laughs> GameStop at 0.10%. A GameStop, a solid $17 today. Um, uh, okay. Uh, SoFi closed at $14.99. Right on. Uh, let's take a look at the final bells here. Uh, yep, SoFi, $14.99. Uh, early close is what I'm showing at the moment. And we're at 15 on the aftermarket. Uh, 16,000 traded so far in the aftermarket uh, on SoFi. Uh, GameStop, 162.50 final close, and that's exactly where we are in the after hours. Uh, went up 15 cents. GameStop ended up 15 cents on the day. How about that? ATIP closed at 415, down 12 cents. And uh, we have uh, uh, Matterport at 14.91 at the bell, uh, down 43 on the day. 23 and me closed at uh, 7.60. Uh, down 33 cents. Low of the day, 7.32 today. Um, fifth wall closed at 12.66, up 18 cents. Vector up 8 cents to 10.62. NAF site down 41 cents. Uh, Sextera closed down 60 at 9.42. Uh, IBM uh, was a positive 8 cents at the end of the day today. Uh, Microsoft up 3 bucks. Apple up 21 cents. And we are done. Another week of trading. A lot of contracts died today in the options market. And, uh, well, we'll see how it all worked out. Did you do okay this week? Did some of you have some really good option writing uh, profits this week? I hope you did. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, 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 Austin, I ain't selling. Uh, Blair, how do you tell if a person without a mask is vaccinated or not? Ask him who won the election. Oh, no. Amber, hey, my only green is stinking GameStop. I'm going to pee my pants laughing so hard. And what a surprise. So far, I ended up at close at $14.99, laughing out loud. Um, the other person isn't taking into account the souls of others. Sounds completely two-faced to me. Uh, let's see here. Um, there was a ton of options activity on SoFi a few weeks ago for what, uh, 820 expiring? Is that today? A war to keep it down under 15 at 1750 strikes. Interesting. Uh, who's the guy on the high wire laughing out loud? Um, let's see. Uh, GameStop is king as always. And it painted green. Um, it did paint green. Um, and uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, uh, Suxel. Sucks, sucks um, uh, I love Disney and Florida. Sorry, Uncle Bruce. Lots of new residents this year loving our state and visiting Disney. Don't believe the news. Anyway, that's our thoughts on, on uh, what are your thoughts on Fifth Wall? Uh, you know, I love Florida too. I really do. I love Florida. I love Floridians. I love Disney World. I love Universal. I want to go cruising so bad. I have a zillion viewers on this channel and Traveling with Bruce that are in Florida. I can't wait to get down there. I really cannot wait, uh, but it's got to be safe to do so. It's got to be sane to do so. Uh, and uh, what can I say? It, it is what it is. Uh, the outside world is not coming to Florida because 
we're not allowed to. <laughs> it's not like I wouldn't want to go to Florida, but I, I tell you, my government right now is saying to me, not a good idea if you really want to go there. Uh, and Europeans cannot come to the U.S. at all uh, because America is not safe enough. Now, of course, America is also saying to Europeans, eh, maybe you guys don't want to come over here right now because, you know, you're having problems too. Uh, it isn't a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Uh, it's so unfortunate. Uh, but when human beings don't get together to fight a common enemy, which this is, it is most discouraging. And there you have it. GameStop, apparently one million in volume. Um, we, I'm showing 993,000 on my machine. You might be right. Uh, who knows? Ah, uh, wow. Um, what can I say? Um, yeah, I left the time machine. To take a look at what these stocks are doing in five years. SoFi, ATIP, Matterport. What can I say? Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Um, uh, Uncle Bruce, if I write, uh, uh, for example, Monday, a GameStop call, uh, 20 August strike, 170, and get about 300 bucks by, uh, but next Wednesday, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> but next Wednesday, GameStop go, comes in at 170. Don't I get enough to cover? <clears throat> excuse me, don't I get enough to cover and then win more if I roll to August 27 at 180? Okay, so if you write a call on Monday, with a 170 strike price, and you receive $300. And, and Wednesday, GameStop goes up to 170. Uh, if I then buy those back, those calls that I wrote at the 170 calls, if I buy them back and now I write 180s instead for the same day, I guess that's right, that's a strategy. But another strategy could be, uh, hang on, another strategy could be where <laughs> you, uh, <sighs> on Wednesday, you buy back the 170 calls. And then you write 180 calls for the next Friday. So that's a nine-day contract now. Because that contract will probably bring you in uh, six or seven dollars. So, in theory, right? Theoretically, if you bring in three dollars a contract by selling these uh, this contract on Monday, the one seventy. By the time Wednesday rolls around, when the stock is one seventy, the contract will have gone up for probably six or seven dollars, because it's at the money with two days to go. Maybe it's five, six bucks. But if you buy it back and then you turn around and write a 180 contract for the next Friday, you'll get that five or six dollars because the time element will give you that more money for a ten dollar out of the money price. So you've pulled the string on the exercise and you've broken even on buying back that contract. You keep the original three dollars, you buy the contract back and sell it for the same price, the 180s that you just bought these back at. You still have the plus $300. You've risen your strike price by 10, and you're now playing 180. And so if next week, Wednesday, the stock is sitting at 170.75, the 180 contract you wrote the Thursday, the the Wednesday before, won't be at six or seven dollars. It'll be at two or three dollars. And on Thursday, it'll be at about one or two dollars. If it's out of the money, it'll drop quickly. So there you go. You can always do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Bruce, you can come to America anytime you want. I just fly down to Mexico and walk in. It's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you were the one that talked about the uh, 820 expiring and big options activity. I did that a little while ago, didn't I? We were talking about that uh, one day on the, on the halftime report. I think it was uh, one of the N Nigerian brothers was mentioning it. And uh, interestingly, how this all worked out, isn't it? I, I can't put two and two together and say this is exactly what happened, but that's interesting. Anyway, that's really interesting. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, yeah, here you go. I live in Western Florida. The humidity will kill you. Except, expect to spend ninety percent of your time in air conditioning. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else is going on here? Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming around, hanging around with us. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, Bruce, what are your thoughts on GameStop squeeze with such low volume? 
Uh, would this be a sign of very low selling, uh, putting more pressure on the hedge funds? Um, you know what? Uh, as I've said a million times, uh, anyone that's short this stock is not being given any reason to cover their short position. There's no, there's no reason for a shorter to panic right now. This stock at 162.50 on GameStop is is a very docile. It's very calm. We're not getting thirty dollars sweat swings anymore per day. You know it's that. You know I'm not yelling at you guys going it's moving, it's moving. It's very calm, very quiet. Six dollar move today. Seven dollar move. That's it. Um, this stock needs to pick up in volume. It needs to move up in volatility. It needs corporate developments to really make things happen. As the short squeeze is 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 would be come into play perhaps if the shares were on a march. They started marching, there might be a short play. Short squeeze play, whatever it is. But right now, uh, anyone who short this stuff is so well funded that they can handle a $250 stock price and not even blink. Uh, hedge funds certainly could handle this thing up to 400 right now, probably not even flinch. They wouldn't like it at 350. I'll tell you that right now, they wouldn't like it at all, but they can afford to hold it. Um, They'll also play other strategies to mitigate the losses. They'll go long calls. They'll write puts. They'll find ways to deflect the cost problem, you know, to, to shelter themselves. They'll find ways to deflate it. Uh, but the folks back in January, last this past January, when we went from, what was it, five, six bucks, 10 bucks in, in October, November, then we went up to the 10, $20 range and then went from there to the 100. Those guys down there, didn't have all kinds of option strategies to protect themselves against losses. They got hit and hit hard because no one thought in a million years that the stock could go in, say, 120 days from four bucks a share to 400 a share. I mean, no one, no one was expecting that for GameStop, but it did. And it caught a lot of pros off guard, really caught them. They'd wake up the next morning and they're down another 50 bucks a share. I mean, it was insanity. Those days are over. That that's come and gone. This this isn't the new normal anymore. We don't we don't have the situation anymore. Brian Cohen can come out tomorrow with an announcement that he's closing 1,500 stores. Won't won't matter a hill of beans. The stock will go up, but it won't go up 500 a share in one day. He comes out tomorrow and says, "See, on Monday morning, Ryan Cohen comes out and says." Uh, we're going to pay a dividend, uh, a crypto dividend of some kind. Well, that'd be great, but the stock won't go to a thousand a share. It'll go up 20, 30 bucks. Uh, there, you got to show me now. We're in the show me state. You got to show me more than that. Uh, GameStop is coming up at the end of this month to the end of its next quarter. We are 17, 18 days away from the end of the quarter. And in September, they will reveal how they're doing in this current 90 day window. The investment community is going to want to see results. They're going to want to see financial results that are showing improvement. The uh, the e-commerce fans are going to say, show me that you're doing a larger percentage of your business on e-commerce than you were before. Show us higher margins on your profits, better take home, better profiting, uh, profit money numbers. This is what we want to know now. We want to see corporate performance. The short thing is is secondary to the to the big picture of the stock. Sure, uh, we'd love to we'd love to hear that uh, the York Center and the one in Reno are coming along, and you know the the number of items they're going to handle online are going to be unbelievable. That they're going to announce a brand new uh, 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 fungible token website. They're going to announce a new e gaming sport tournament type website. Oh, all that, yeah, we want that too, but. Um, that won't move the stock to a thousand bucks a share. Uh, we need results uh, to 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 take it to another level. We, it's time to show. The good news is the company's in fantastic financial condition. Cash in the bank, no debt. Uh, they're they're working off. They're dump. They're dumping the garbage stores that aren't delivering. Yeah, they're they're gone. They're eliminating. Yeah, they're making changes. We know all that. Uh, that will be repeat revealed and reported. We will see it. But we now need to see the next stage of this move. And that's how Chewy, for example, uh, became a profitable company. We want to see how this one becomes a profitable company and how profitable can they become. That's what we want to know now. And we'll see where we're at. That's coming up.
anyway, there you go. Uh, thank you. Thank you for hanging around. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. What else is going on? Thank you, everybody, for popping around and, and to seeing me and hanging out with yours truly, uh, visiting with us. It's nice to have you here. Uh, a lot of comments have come in, and I'm way behind you guys. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, anyway, uh, okay, so that means I get to keep <clears throat> my 300 bucks and increase chances of keeping the stock because the strike is now 180. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly right. And you will do that every time. Every time you have, you go from 180, you'll right, you'll move up to 190s. You got to move again. You'll roll over, go to 200s. You'll pull the string on that stock, keep pulling it away from them. And making them come up and get you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eventually, that premium is all yours. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, and up goes your stock. That's it. Uh, there you have it. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> What else is going on here? Uh, I'm going to avoid all the political comments. If I can at all do it, I'm going to do the best I can. i try to avoid all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> here we go, Bruce. I'm thinking of taking advantage on the drop in SoFi. Maybe sell some of my stocks and buy some calls for January or later. What do you think? Um, well... Uh, Hoster Guard, you, you could try that. Uh, on the other hand, you could just sit tight uh, because in one or two days, you know, one, two, three, four trading days from now, SoFi could be back to 1750 a share and just getting ready to rock it again. Uh, the the uh, the uh, sellers are gone. Anybody who had to get out today got out. They're out. They're done. They're not coming back. Uh, the, the stock's been picked up by solid hands. There is a lot less stock available now between here and 30 a share. Than before, a lot less, and uh, the upward movement of the stock is 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 locked in. It now can happen. Just a question of what day does it go? Um, you know. Anyway, what can I tell you? Um, let's see. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, we ain't changing anyone on this chat. Let's all get SoFi and authors, <laughs> the others back up. How about that? I agree. Um, let's see. Uh, GameStop has showed us its range. At 340, it will reset. There you go. Um, and uh, donuts are better than bagels. Oh, those are fighting words. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, SoFi in the aftermarket, $15 a share, uh, 1501 on 73,000 shares, by the way. Very quiet uh, over at this point now. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what else is going on? Um, oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. Um, I have a great weekend. Thank you, Philly Flasher. Uh, uh, stay behind Bruce and fast forward. Um, <laughs> uh, man, oh man, oh man. Uh, if GameStop 2021 fourth quarter financial report is anything like last year, we will see a huge price growth. Anticipation the fourth quarter will be crazy. Well, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I I like I just just like everything about GameStop that's happened in the last six months. I like it all. This whole year, uh, this company is no longer a sleepy little brick and mortar company anymore. That is about to change. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh my gosh. Um, let's see. Ah. Uh. Benville, um, um, host of God. I asked Uncle Bruce pretty much the same earlier. I went to buy 10 contracts of SoFi, $15 calls for a $3 premium for January. 
have control of a thousand shares instead of buying 200 there you go that's it right there that's exactly the way um notice how your stock did not back off at all it just didn't go down very interesting um let's see um uh let's go let's go here um Uh, David is saying, Uncle Bruce, I brought my average down to 141 on the uh, December 17, 12 and a half, 23 and me calls. Of course, I now I have 75 now. I got a few 25s today. Bought the average way down. Well, for a, not a lot of money, you brought these way way down. So you don't need a lot of uh, performance anymore to to make a buck, to make a good buck on this. Uh, yes, you will need the stock to go higher, obviously, but uh, not like before. Uh, it doesn't have to go as high anymore as it would have before to have you make money on make money on it. So that's the beauty of averaging down right there. Um, and uh, uh, I, I just tuned in. It looks like I missed something. Doesn't matter. I like the stock. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, Bruce. Uh, Bruce thinking fifteen dollars SoFi call either January three twenty or April at three ninety. Ah, interesting. Um, yeah, you know. I would prefer you look at 1250s. Um, I would, if you could buy in the monies, that would be better. Um, look at the January 1250s and see if you can get them. Uh, they'll be more than 390, but maybe in the fours, because you're getting 250 book value. Um, watch for a dip on Monday morning. There might be a first thing in the hour, first hour dip. You know, maybe the stock drops to 1420 and it pops to 16 bucks. I don't know. I'm just asking, maybe speculating. Those contracts, those 1250s might come in just perfectly for you. Just, I'm just saying, if you're a buyer now, the other hand, don't get mad at me. If the stock starts at $16 on Monday morning, I, I'm i sorry. Uh, you know, there's nothing I can do for you. Uh, let's see what happens. All right. Anyway, uh, what's going on here? Um, lots of comments going on here. I'm not going to, I'm trying to avoid political comments vaccine comments I'm trying to avoid them as best I can uh, as best as best I can uh, let's see thank you everybody for being here I think <laughs> uh, let's go um, let's go 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 <laughs> um, uh, let's see uh, I had 50 at an average of 205 before the average down to 141 right on um, and um, uh, let's see what else is going on here? So, uh, whew, uh, 60 million SoFi sold off today, and someone bought it all up, well, but would only pay 15. That's ice gold. Um, very interesting. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's see. Trivia tonight. Yeah, there is trivia tonight. Believe it or not, there is actually trivia tonight. I've forgotten to mention it all day. Uh, thank you for mentioning it because I've forgotten again to mention it. 7 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. I will be on this channel and traveling with Bruce. Members only, you can join me for live trivia. i got a couple questions lined up, ready to go. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, Bruce, did anything come out on 23andMe today? They released their earnings this morning, and uh, they came out before the opening. Uh, that came out. I'm waiting for a reaction over the weekend. I'll let you know what they say on Monday. Uh, the stock went to 760 on the end of the day, down 33 cents. So whatever earnings came out did not move the markets today. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, let's see. Um, Let's go, let's go. Um, what's going on? What's going on? Remember when Friday used to be a drinking game? <laughs> yes, I'm sure some of you are drinking right now. Cheers to all of you out there who are uh, who are having a libation or two. I uh, hope you're enjoying your day. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll be doing classes this weekend, and uh, looking forward to seeing some of you there. And um, let's see. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for popping in and saying hi. Uh, appreciate you're all here. Um, I bought uh, I bought uh, fifteen dollar calls on SoFi expiring January for three fifteen premium. 
There you go. Uh, the premium on those contracts are high. Um, obviously, the stock yesterday at seventeen fifty, those are worth two fifty book plus premium. They would have been over four fifty a piece or so. So, uh, yep. Let's see what happens. Um, and um, um, uh, Eddie, of course, you won't read my message. Laugh out loud. Uh, that's right. Uh, let's see. Uh, not drinking for fun. I'm drinking for necessity at the moment. Uh, Waterford Reserve on the rocks, um, and Uncle Bruce, we uh, we love you. It's so wise, explain everything so well, uh, and um, uh, uh, Bruce, I have a conundrum. Should I buy seventy contracts on SoFi or uh, for January, or buy the stock? There you go, seventy contracts, seven thousand shares of uh, for leverage. I got my thumb in for uh, I got my thumb in for Uncle Bruce. Just cracking my first frosty of the weekend. Thank you uh, very much for that. Uh, David, thank you. Um, um, and uh, <laughs> uh, what else here? Uh, anyway, there you go, kids. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thumbs ups today. Uh, 267 thumbs ups today. Uh, very quiet uh, on the market. We have 45 down. I pissed off everybody today. Uh, but sometimes the truth is what you have to get, whether you like it or not. Um, get it from your friend. Maybe you can trust them. Uh, what can I say? Uh, 266 for the thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, for uh, throwing a few our way. Uh, we have 375 of you watching here late on a Friday as we're coming into the close of this whole thing. Um, unbelievable. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, another crazy, kooky week. Hopefully, this coming week will be much better. We'll play it by ear. Let's see what's happening. Um, we have a lot of news to go through, a lot of developments to still follow. And let's just see if the markets treat us better. Simple as that. 272 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. So far, 1498 on the aftermarket. 140,000 traded. That's what we got right there. Um, and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, John. You take care. Have a great weekend. Um, and uh, what can I say? Um, let's go. Let's go. Okay. There you have it. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, uh, sorry, we aren't happier, but you know, you get good days, everyone's happy. You get a bad day, everyone starts picking everybody, just the way it is. I'll be here Monday uh, anyway at 8:30 to keep following this market to see where it takes us, and um, I'll be doing classes this weekend. Hopefully, you can join me. If not, we'll see you Monday morning. If you can join us for trivia tonight at seven o'clock, that would be terrific. Uh, I'd love to have you come by. Um, that would be cool. Um, let's see what's going on. Bruce, the, uh, the Oscar 12, the 1250s will cost me 455. I'm thinking of selling, uh, I'm thinking of selling in 3000 and other stocks and throw them at SoFi, but the premium seems a little high right now. Yeah, 455, uh, the stock is around 15. That's a 250 contract with a $2 premium, but that is cheaper than the premium on the Januarys, isn't it? Uh, so, you know, let's see what happens Monday morning. Uh, maybe you'll get a little pullback Monday morning. It'll give you a shot at getting in there for less. Who knows? Keep an eye open for that and see what's going on. Anyway, there you go. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, did you talk about the Wall Street Journal article a little bit? I uh, mentioned about how uh, our friend Mr. Cohen was mentioned in that article. They were covering his, uh, his entire involvement in GameStop from the beginning to where he is now. And I, I like the article overall. I hadn't did a problem with it, um, but the article did kind of try to put a bit of a down spin on it at the end when they mentioned how the company raised 1.9 billion. Like that was a bad thing. I think it's a wonderful thing that they raised 1.9 billion. But uh, uh, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, if you get a chance, check it out. If you get the, you should be able to see that article. I think it's available for free. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that. Uh, you'll be able to see that article read it yourself. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, keep smiling, Bruce. I hope the classes are going well. I have faith in our picks long term. Thank you, everybody. Um, and uh, let's go. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, 44, that's not an all time high. I've done better than that. On uh, a Dallas machine trying to shoot, sh to shoot people while delivering mail, dude. On a Dallas machine trying to shoot people while delivering mail. Yikes, uh, that's crazy. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't have an opinion on 23andMe. I'll, I'll talk to you about it on Monday. I'll do some digging on, on 23andMe over the weekend and see if uh, I can come up with an opinion on it. The stock, the market had its opinion today. Not impressed. And uh, that's what it saw. 
but on Monday we'll see what we can talk about on that one. All righty. Uh, we had a lot of fun this morning in lieu of afternoon drinking. Uh, that's true, Larry. It was a good time this morning. Uh, absolutely a good time. <laughs> uh, again, I'll give you my opinion on this on Monday. We'll see what we uh, what we come up with. I got some reading to do. Uh, we'll see what's going on. All righty. Thank you. Uh, if I'm a member of this channel, am I automatically a member of the other channel? No. No. You're either one or the other. Uh, you have to be a member of both to be both. That's how YouTube runs it. It's not me that runs it. Thank you, Michael. You take care. Um, I trust my immune system, and I don't like anyone telling me how to get a shot. Oh, that's great. Great. That's fine. That's fine. Just just wear a mask. Wear a mask. All right. Make it happen. Uh, adios, Bruce. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. We'll see you later tonight at 7 o'clock, if you dare. See you for classes on Saturday, Saturday or Sunday, if you dare dare. And then we'll see you on Monday at 8.30 if you triple dare. And uh, have a good one in the meantime. Thank you for being here. Have a great evening. Bye for now.